everyone, so another year, another practical astronomy show. Helped earlier with a little bit of the setup, and it looks like it's going to be a great show. They're in a slightly newer venue this time. Looks like there's lots of lovely gear to look at. So hopefully you'll join us tomorrow morning after breakfast. Simon and I will be trekking a little trip down to Stonely Park Lodge and uh, we'll have a look at all the lovely gear. So we'll see you there. But while we're waiting for tomorrow, it'd be rude not to. Cheers, Simon. Cheers, mate. Good health. First job of the day is to check in with all of our Astro Buddies. Nice to see you. Yeah. Hello. Oh, come on. I've always had the bone mine. Have you? Yeah. Is that mine one then? Oh, is it? No, I bet I can get one for free. Hang on. Well, I got one for free. I've been trying to get one of yours for free. Nice one, Rob. Oh, hang on. There you are. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you, but if you have a look at him, do you not think he's got that kind of Dustin Hoffman going on? People say that, you know. Yeah. You yeah. have? You are not Very the You I know, yeah. you are, yeah. Is. This is recording. Oh, is it? <laughs> oh, it's How's it all going now, all right? Business good? Crazy. Well, it's great. We are global. Brilliant. Yeah, on like a big level now. Brilliant. It's absolutely in our way of our real jobs. Excellent, excellent. So, We've got a speed socket now that, um, we would give ours for these legs. Lots of smart telescopes on the market now and uh, are proving very popular with beginners and people with uh, limited access or want to get out and about with equipment so it's good to see a large choice available.
this is what you get on a reasonable seeing day off your camp, okay? You've got the traditional green color balance problem, you know, you've got it jumping around a bit, it's never as sharp as you want. And all you have to do is turn on live stacking here for solar, lunar and planetary live stacking in Sharkcam. And actually it's all been pre-set up and you're getting an image already. But if I reset everything, what you would see when you started is it stabilized it the image and it stacked it. Yeah. So then we auto adjust the brightness and color. Okay, so we're now back into a decent white balance and we give ourselves a bit of saturation to give the image some meat. And then just hit the auto sharpen button. Okay, and immediately Brilliant. we've got a Jupiter that you'd be quite pleased with, okay? And if you want a bit more sharpness, we can auto sharpen more. And in fact, we haven't had any added many frames to the stack so far. So let's just speed up the flow of frames, turn off the filtering so it adds all the frames to the stack. And now that, as we're adding now, we're up seven or 800 frames on the stack. The noise levels drop. So if we hit auto sharpen again, it actually pushes the sharpening further because it sees there's less noise yeah. there so it can take the sharpening further and you've actually got you know quite and you're getting a really good res uh, result there that would normally take you quite a long time a long time yeah and, uh, another advantage here is that the learning loop between you doing something and seeing your results is one one minute yeah or less. yeah you can so, see if you're going right yeah, or if wrong you make it, if yeah. you get something wrong you just make some adjustments and do it again. If you're doing traditional processing, it might be several hours before you get around to processing that file. And therefore, if you do learn anything from it... So you're processing it, this on the fly, so you can, see, you, and see it. you can see if you're out of focus, you can see if you've got yeah. collimation problems, Brilliant. your colour balance is out. So that gets you one image and you just press save to PNG and look, I've saved this to, to a PNG I can use later. But you can also go in and do a time lapse. Right. Okay, and that's where that video that I showed you a minute ago. So that was a time lapse. A time lapse. Mm. Uh, and just set the options here, like save a frame every five seconds, and then there's an option here. It's a good one to create a, a GIF version, animated GIF. Mm -hmm. Because when it's done, so you press start time lapse. Jupiter sort of goes across the sky and rotates, and you go in and have your dinner, and the telescope tracks, and you come back out an hour or two later, and you press stop. And when you do press stop, you've got a time lapse saved, like one of these ones here. So that one's got some shad moons. It's shadows. got some moons, yeah. yeah. Wow. And you can see the seeing come and go yeah. as it came and went over that evening when I was capturing it. I love that when you get the shadow yeah. going yeah. across the planet's yeah. surface. That's cool, yeah, isn't it? I like that. It does give you a real 3D look. Wow. look. So, so, you know, this makes the whole thing. And if you'd have wanted to do this the classical way, you'd have taken probably 100 or 200 videos and processed each of them in auto stack. Yeah, it takes ages. Sharpened each of them, stack, uh, brought them together into a video. It's too much work. I think this makes planetary a lot more accessible. Yeah, it does. So you can't really see the corona in this image. No. But then turn that on and it's boosting oh, outside yeah. the sun's disk. And you can change the amount so you can brighten that up a bit more outside the disc and basically you then get to see the the solar disc and the corona in the same shot again all live it's amazing mate isn't it? there was some really exciting new products at the show one being an open trust telescope like a newtonian for solar um, comes from hungary from a company called soul eye Also at the show we met Andre who was displaying his new Star Tracker, the OG Star Tech. Looked like a very interesting piece of equipment was that it was very sturdy and capable of carrying quite large payloads so if you had need for Star Tracking with say a larger lens this would be capable of supporting it where something smaller like the Move Shoot Move Nomad might struggle. So hopefully in the future more details on this as I'll hopefully get my hands on one to test. Well, an absolutely fantastic show. Had a great time. And now, time to jump back in the Astro bus and go home. Say goodbye, Simon. Bye.